So when we talked about open lines of communication, the other question would be, what are some of the best effective ways to communicate with your parents, right? So the first and foremost, all we could all do is send an email. Sending an email is great. It, it sends it to, you know, the information gets to them. They know they're opening up. You have some information. There's nothing wrong and you want to send that almost weekly. So the other thing is sometimes you might have a teacher web, right? Or you have, might have your own teacher website that has information and the teachers and parents have to go on their own to find out what that information is which is good, but that means they have to sometimes go on their own to kind of keep up and they don't know if something has just been updated and stuff. So sometimes it comes random. So email, at least when they know something's in their box, they know it's there. So even if you have a website, you might want to still email them to say, check out the, uh, the website. I have some more information. That will help them kind of uh, go and check that, that information you need, right? So that's two. Sometimes you might have, well, so, well you know, I'm gonna have um, in my class and all the parents are able to come and, and meet me and or we're gonna have a Zoom meeting and now you have 25 people there. So you're gonna go through all your information and they're going to maybe ask one or two questions. You got 15, 20 minutes and then you need to go. A little bit more, better effective way would be maybe that same class of 25 and say, you know what, I'm gonna break them into like four groups and say like seven or 10 at max at one time. This way, same information, but more opportunity for them to ask questions because it's a smaller group. And that way they feel like they were more involved and not 25, 30 and so, well, you know what, I can't ask the same question or, you know, they already had two questions and we don't have any more time. So I think that kind of also helps out. The fourth way is making sure that you have a one-on-one -on -one communication with them, right? And that one-on-one -on -one communication could be by phone. And especially if there's something critical that you have to talk to your parent about, never try to send a detailed information about someone getting in trouble or something that could be very critical or could be misunderstood or they could hurt their feelings or you might see a parent might be mad because it might be a discipline issue. Do not email the whole detailed information because the way they read it might not be the way you will try to send it. So it's so important to pick up the phone so they can see your tone of voice. Uh, if it's, especially if it's even live, they can see your facial expression. Say, look, I, you know, this happened. We understand children are making mistakes. We want to work with you. And then you move from there. That could also ease that up because the phone, they could get panicking. That's why also so important for great effective communication is that if you pick two kids every week and just call them, say, I just want to talk to you about why I'm so excited to have your child at our school. That's gonna change the game. When I remember I was in the inner city and I did that with some parents, some parents were like, oh my God, I never had someone call me just to say positive things about my child. Because anytime any teacher ever called, it was about my child didn't do this or he or she is like this. So that can also be very effective where you just kind of slowly build that relationship when they see them. And then the last one is sometimes maybe in the classroom, it's outside the, if you were that in the morning, uh, morning assembly, you're there, parents get to see you, or you're outside where when they drop off and pick up and they get to see you or, or when they're uh, at the pickup time or when it's, it's going to a drop off time or it's pickup time and you pick one of those and that way they get to see you at, randomly. That also lets them kind of be like, okay, hey, you know what? We don't have enough time to talk here, but I, I know you want to talk to me. Let's follow up with them. But if they get to see you when things are not uh, any problems and they just see your demeanor and talking to kids, that changes the game. And even for me as administrator, it's so important for me in the morning to be around, parents get to see me or after school, so that way that it's not the first time they're ever gonna see me is when there's a child's in trouble or, or, or just you know for a critical situation. But when they see me in good times, then when that time happens, because we have that relationship, they'll have a better understanding and be more open to listen to you. So hopefully keep those things in mind.